Hey guys, this is Ray, your outside guide, and it's Friday morning, it's just after 5 a.m., so it's not too terribly long before you guys would normally wake up, and I'm about to head to Big Bend National Park. I hope you guys are having a great day as you're watching this, and um, if not, I hope that I can bring a little bit of joy to your day. So there's two different ways to head to Big Bend from San Antonio. One is 90, and one is I-10. And both routes are, are pretty much um, they take about the same amount of time. I was driving in the morning and I didn't want to have a lot of stops um, through all of the different towns as every town was waking up to conduct their daily business on this Friday. So um, so instead I came through I-10, which um, kind of freed up a lot of the um, a lot of the drive time for just enjoying the, uh, I, I actually was listening to a new album and um, so I got to spend time enjoying that without having to, you know, stop at every little, you know, stop light and stop sign and all the speed limit changes throughout all the different towns you pass through. Um, it was just a matter of my preference for today. So we're about to turn left onto 385 and this is basically the, the main last turn before you head into the park. common to stop at the park entrance to take a picture by the entrance sign. That's what these people are doing. Alright, so we just drove through the um, Persimmon Gap Visitor Station and as you can see there was no one there. So we're driving on to the Panther Junction Visitor Center and that's where we'll um, register, you know, pay the park entrance fees and all that. One of the main questions I get asked all the time is, how long does it take to get there? Um, we started out at about 5.10 in the morning, as I recall, and it's now about 11 o'clock, which, um, let's just say 5 to 11. So, what is that, six hours? There's still a little bit of a, an additional drive to get up to the hotel. I'll give you some timestamps as I get to the places, that way you can do the math in your head. So one other thing to keep in mind is that the speed limit inside the Big Bend National Park is 45 miles an hour, um, unless otherwise posted. Just be mindful of, of the people around you and, um, and try to help everyone have a great experience. Normally when I come into the park, I'll stop at, um, you know, one of the exhibits on the way in. There's a number of different exhibits on the way into Big Bend National Park, and they all have something interesting to, um, to learn and, you know, helps to stretch the legs and stand outside and in nature. And as you can see, you know, behind me, the, the day has turned out to be very pleasant. It's uh, absolutely quiet out here. The peacefulness is um, is worth it. You know, as you can see all around me, there's there are no buildings or you know cars zooming by or signs of civilization, and uh, you know <laughs> it's it's probably one of the best deals you can make to to come out to a national park and pay the entrance fee, whether you get the annual pass or not and um, to be able to disconnect to this to this level. So I just got my annual pass. The, um, the annual pass to enter the, the national parks, all national parks is $80 for, um, for me. I'm not in the seniors category or any of that, so I don't get any of the discounts that might be associated with those options. You check into the park, they give you a little receipt sticker that you stick on your windshield, that way they can know that you um, that you've already paid your fee, and it has a date on it, obviously, which is the last date that the receipt is good for. So now we're going to drive on up to the basin, and it's 11:56 now. So we're making good time. So it's now 12 o'clock, and I'm turning up Basin Road, and this is the main road where all the uh, where the hotel and the restaurant is and 
the campgrounds. As the sign says, this is bear and mountain lion country. This pullout on the right is one of the more popular pullouts. You can basically see the window formation up in front of us. Um, down beneath that is the campground area. And then off to our left is Casa Grande. So I'm starting to set up my, my site. And you can see Casa Grande is basically right within view. So. So I'm driving up and out of the basin at this point because I'm still waiting on some friends to arrive. I think I'm going to end up stopping at a nearby pullout to see if any kind of critters are nearby. As you can see, the deer doesn't respond to the normal calls of the Mexican jays. Whatever the jay said right then got the deer's attention though. Looks like everything's all clear so the deer's able to go back to its business. However, while we're sitting here, the weather is changing. Not too high up above the campgrounds on Lost Mine Trail, this is what's going on. The clouds continue to roll in. There was a rumor that I was here like seven times one year and the number kept growing. It always helps to bring a book or something to sit tight with when the weather becomes adverse. Before you know it, you can see the blue skies again. The sun is out again, so we decide to head to Santa Elena Canyon via Old Maverick Road. Far away, you can still see Santa Elena Canyon above the car's side view mirror. As you can see, the um, the scale is actually quite large. Look at this. I'm sitting here by some Big Ben blue bonnets. I'm actually sitting down, and uh, they're considerably tall. Um, they're almost as tall as me sitting down. There's Santa Elena Canyon in the background. Anyway, I just wanted to show you the um, blue bonnet goodness that's out here. If you haven't seen Big Ben blue bonnets, you need to make a point to get out here. It's always a treat to see the collared peccary or javelina out in Big Bend National Park. The Castellan area of Big Bend National Park is extremely colorful and the formations are amazing. You might feel like you're driving through Martian landscape as you pass through this area. Here you can see Mueller's Peaks off to the right. This is the view from one of the many scenic overlooks on Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive. The Sotol Vista overlook is always impressive. Every once in a while this place throws you for a loop. In this case, we have a layer of clouds on the ground up ahead. So I'm out here at the Fossil Bone exhibit and uh, the place is hopping right now. It's been redesigned, it looks absolutely amazing. And um, it's entirely worth a visit if you're in the Big Bend National Park, it always was. Um, but it's definitely, the facilities have been upgraded and improved upon and the informational signs are, are all new and improved. 
Um, anyway, I just got a couple of pictures and I decided to kind of walk off in a different direction and see what else was up here. All right, so basically behind me, I've got the Chizos Mountains and an Ocotillo. And these Ocotillos have red blooms that appear on their tips. Hopefully you appreciate the beauty of these crazy looking plants just as much as I do. If you look closely, you'll oftentimes find signs of prior civilization throughout the park. Make sure to verify road conditions with park rangers as low water crossings can sometimes make roads impassable out here. Okay, so as you can see, grabbed myself a corner of absolute solitude, which is difficult to find in today's society. The sound of the wind is uh, its very much like the ocean. The heat, you can feel the radiant heat from the ground but I'm completely in the shade, so it's nice and cool where I'm at. I could easily fall asleep here. It's very uh, probable that I will. And that's basically the, the power, the overwhelming power of getting into nature. It's just how soothing, how relaxing it can be. In addition to the campgrounds up in the basin, there are several other camping options, including these backcountry campsites out in the desert. And you can see that the peace and quiet is unparalleled in this type of a campsite. Now I think it's time to head up to the basin and grab a room. In addition to being that formation you see there, the window is actually a pour-off, which you can see on the opposite side of the Chizos Mountains here. And when all the conditions line up just right, the color in the desert is amazing. Some people come here for the solitude. Some people come here for the springtime wildflowers. Some people are drawn to the wildlife that is drawn to the springtime wildflowers. Many are drawn to the rugged terrain and formations throughout the park. And many are drawn to the unobstructed skies, day or night. There are also people who are attracted to the Big Bend National Park because of the diverse wildlife that exists throughout the park. Here you'll see a rattlesnake crossing the road. Had it stayed on the road where it was, it was certainly going to become a roadkill. Anyway, as you can see, this guy's just retreating. He's going to start rattling when he gets cornered against the brush that he's retreating into.